Angle of rotation problems can come up in several NCWS FE exams, civil, mechanical, and other disciplines. In mathematics, the angle of rotation is a measurement of the amount of namely angle that a figure is rotated about a fixed point, often the center of a circle. In this video, I'm going to solve an angle of rotation FE exam practice problem. But first, let me remind you that the FE exam or Fundamentals of Engineering is the first step to getting your professional engineering license. And through the videos on this channel, including this one, you will learn not only how to properly prepare for the exam, but how to ensure that you pass the FE exam. So please be sure to subscribe to my channel here as my weekly videos will help you pass the FE exam. And if you leave questions in the comments below, I will answer them in future videos. So let's dive into the angle of rotation practice problem. This sample problem has been provided to us by Prep FE. Prep FE is one of the most effective FE exam self-study prep services out there and happens to be one of the most affordable too. Prep FE is an app that gives you access to countless sample FE problems to bolster your self-study efforts. You can visit prepfe.com forward slash redeem and use the discount code in the description of this video to receive 10% off and get some great FE practice problems. So here's the problem. What is the angle of rotation needed to get the stress element in the maximum principal stress state? You should refer to the Moore's Circle section in the Mechanics of Materials chapter of the FE Reference Handbook for this problem, which in the latest book should be on page 133. First, what I'd like to do is run through the three steps that you will need to take to solve this problem at a high level. But then I will break down each of these steps on the following screens. Once again, thank you to Prep FE for providing this great problem and really clear solution. So the three steps that you will need to take to solve this problem are Step 1. Draw a quick Moore's circle based on what's shown in the stress element. Step 2. Draw a right triangle from the center of the Moore's circle to a known point along the circle. Determine the Moore's circle's angle between the known point and the sigma axis or x-axis, which is where the principal stress occurs. That will be the Moore's circle rotation angle needed to get to a principal stress state. And again, I'm going to show this to you. I'm going to break down each step in a minute. And then finally, step three, convert the Moore's circle's rotation angle needed to get to a principal stress state to the stress element's angle needed to get to a principal stress state. Let me dive into these steps in more detail now, starting with step number one. Draw a quick Moore circle based on what's shown in the stress element. Refer to the stress element shown in the FE reference handbook to understand its sign notation. Normal stresses, in tension going away from the stress element, are positive, and normal stresses in compression going into the stress element are negative. For shear stresses, look at the right side of the stress element. If the right shear arrow pulls the stress element clockwise, then the shear is negative. If the right shear arrow pulls the stress element counterclockwise, then the shear is positive. And you can see the arrows here. You can see 530 is pulling it clockwise. And then you can see the normal stresses here as well. And you can deduce that the shear stress is negative 530 megapascals. The normal stresses are 400 megapascals in the x direction and 500 and negative 550 megapascals in the y direction. You can use those numbers to determine the center of Moore's circle using this equation found in the handbook, where you will determine it to be negative 75 megapascals, which you can see here on the sketch. With the known info, you can plot a random point along the circumference of the circle, which you see here, because you now have the center of the Moore circle at negative 75, and you have the coordinates for the normal stresses of 400 and negative 530, giving you this point. Step two, plot a right triangle from the center of the Moore circle to the known point along the circumference of the circle, which you can see right here in the pink dashed line. Right, you connected the dots that I've just explained to you, and you made it a right triangle. You can then use Pythagoras' theorem to solve for the hypotenuse of the triangle, 
which is also the radius of the circle, which you can see right here. Using Pythagoras' theorem, you can determine the hypotenuse, which is the radius, to be 711.7 megapascals. The angle 2 theta is the Mohr circle's angle to get a principal stress state. The rotation angle needed to get to the stress element to a principal stress state is theta. This problem asks for the angle to get the stress element to a principal stress state. You got to be careful there. You got to understand the difference between the two. So you can calculate the Moore's circle's angle to a principal stress state using Sokatoa. We finally use Sokatoa. We learned it in school. We didn't know if it was going to come in handy ever in our lives, but it comes in handy here. And using it, you can determine that the angle shown here, which is 2 theta, is 48 degrees. Now for step three, you have to convert the Moore's circle's rotation angle needed to get to a principal stress state to the stress element's angle needed to get to a principal stress state. And again, we know Moore's circle's angle is 2 theta, which we already calculated to be 48 degrees. So the stress element's rotation angle to a principal stress state is simply theta, which would be half of that, or 24 degrees counterclockwise. And you can refer to the explanation image here to understand why the rotation is counterclockwise to get to a max principal stress point. And there you have it. That's the answer to your problem. The answer is D, 24 degrees counterclockwise. And again, be careful with some of the wording here. It's a little bit tricky, but the calculations themselves are fairly simple. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will be talking about what you should be doing the week prior to the FE exam. Past the FE exam, we'll publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problem solutions, weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And these are tips that you can't get anywhere else, and believe me, you won't want to miss a single video. And I encourage you to please ask questions in the comments below that I will read and respond to in future videos. So if there's a specific topic that you'd like me to cover or a question you'd like answered, pass the FE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week.